Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be going over problem 3 from week 3 of the Invariant Summer Puzzle Competition. As always, I'll leave a link in the description below to the Facebook page of the Invariants where you can find out more details about the competition. Anyway, this is the problem we have for today and it's a geometry problem. We have two triangles in the plane, both have area A and perimeter P. They can be translated and rotated in the plane, but they cannot be reflected so that they intersect. So we have two triangles and we're allowed to like sort of translate them and maybe rotate them so that they intersect. We want to prove that the maximum area of this intersection is at least 28 over square root of 3 times a squared over p squared. Okay, so given two triangles uh, with same area, same perimeter, and if we're allowed to rotate and translate them, uh, we want to show that we can always find a way which in which we can uh, intersect them such that the area of intersection is at least 28 over root 3 times a squared over p squared. Okay, so if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to jump straight into a solution. Okay, so before I get into a solution to this problem, I just want to say that there are a bunch of different ways to solve this problem, and in fact you can do better than the bound of 28 over root 3 that we want to. In other words, that there exists k which is bigger than 28 over root 3, and you can show that you can make these triangles have an intersection area of at least k a squared over p squared. Anyway, that was kind of left as a bonus exercise to solvers, and solvers would get more credit. But in this video, I'm just going to show you one of the few ways in which you, or one of the many ways, sorry, in which you can solve this problem and find that bound 28 over root 3. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is state and prove a lemma. I haven't written out the lemma in full, but hopefully it makes sense from my picture and my explanation. Suppose we have a pentagon, A, B, C, D, E, and inside it we have this circle which just touches each of the five edges. Then, I'm oh sorry, and the circle also has radius r. Then I claim that the area of the pentagon, A, B, C, D, E, is at least this guy here. So 2 root 3 plus tan squared of 45 minus theta over 4 times cotangent of theta over 2, uh, close bracket, times r squared. So here I'm working in degrees, and I claim that this formula here holds. Now let's prove it. The way we're going to prove it is to split up this pentagon into two shapes and then work out the areas of those two shapes and show that it's at least this guy here. So first we're going to add on this dotted line, like so. So let's call this point here L, this point here M, and the point where it just touches the circle H. Now the thing to notice is that E, L, M, B, C, D is now a hexagon, and this hexagon just touch, or sorry, a circle just touches each of the sides of the hexagon. Now, there's a very famous result, and I'm not going to prove this in this video, but hopefully it's something you can look up if you haven't seen before. But if you have a circle that's uh, within an n-gon, and it's just touching each, each of the sides, then the area of that n-gon is at least the area of, the same, of, of a regular n-gon doing the same thing. So in other words, the area of this hexagon here, because this hexagon might not be a regular hexagon, it could be irregular, it, you know, in a general case it is, it's an irregular hexagon, and the area of it is at least that of a regular hexagon with this same circle just touching each of the edges. So we know that the area of the hexagon then is just at least the area of the regular uh, hexagon. And you can go ahead and work that out. And that is just 2 root 3 times r squared, like so. And hopefully you can see that our answer is already kind of, hopefully you can see we're working towards our answer here because we've got 2 root 3 here, r squared r squared like so. So that gives us a bound on the area of the hexagon. Now what we want to do is try and do something with the area of the triangle. Let's continue. Okay, so as I said, what we want to do next is consider this area of the triangle here, so ALM, and I've just sort of zoomed in on our diagram here because we only care about the top part of it. Now to compute this, we're actually just going to use some very elementary geometry. Firstly, notice that this angle here is theta degrees, so um, if I bisect it like I've done here, so drawing a line from A to O, this angle here is just going to become theta over 2, like so. Now, angles in this triangle here add up to 180 degrees, but notice that this is a right angle, just by a very basic circle theorem. So uh, if that's 90 degrees, that's theta over 2. This guy here must be 90 minus theta over 2, so all angles add up to 180 degrees. But if this is 90 minus theta over 2, and we know angles on this straight line here add up to 180 degrees, this thing here must be 90 plus theta over 2. But, in fact, we don't care about this massive angle here. In fact, we only care about half of it. Namely, when I draw the line from O to M, like so, that's going to bisect this angle. And I'll let you check that that's true. But, of course, bisecting it divides 90 plus theta over 2 by 2. So this angle here is just 45 plus 
theta over 4. Because 90 plus theta over 2 divided by 2 gives us this thing here. Now, if we look at this triangle here, I realize it's getting, you know, very, very, uh, 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 I'm not sure words. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but hopefully it all makes sense. This angle here, this small one here, so um, HMO is 45 plus theta over 4. This angle here is a right angle. So that means this angle here must be 45 minus theta over 4. So everything adds up to 180 degrees. Right. Once we've done this, we can now actually compute this length here, so HM, which is what we want to compute. Now, firstly, before I do that, notice that this length here, HM, is the same as LH, just by symmetry. And now, what does it equal? Well, we can use just the fact that tan of 45 minus theta over 4 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So opposite is just MH, or HM, and then divide that by the adjacent, which is just R. So, of course, that gives us that HM is just R times this guy here. So, let me write it up here. So, it's R tan theta, oh, sorry, 45 minus theta over 4. So, a lot of sort of ugly messiness going on in the diagram, but hopefully not too difficult to follow along and see that we've got the HM equals LH equals R tan 45 minus theta over 4. So, that's given us this slide length here. Let me clean up, the, uh, clean up this diagram a little bit and then we'll work out the area of the triangle. Okay, so we have HM and LH in terms of R and theta. The next thing we want to do in order to compute the area of this triangle here is to compute AH in terms of R and theta. Now this is thankfully a little bit more straightforward. We just use essentially one computation, noticing that tan of theta over 2, so tan of this angle here is just opposite over adjacent, so LH all over AH. And we want to know what AH is, so we get that AH is simply equal to LH times cotangent of theta over 2. Now, hopefully, you can see these terms starting appear, to appear in what we're trying to aim for. So we have AH equals uh, LH cot theta over 2, and we know that the, what LH and uh, HM are, so this guy here. So we can actually go ahead and straightforward, use a straightforward computation to calculate the area of this triangle, which is just half times base times height. So the base is just half. So half times, and the base is just this guy plus this guy, so two lots of LH. And the height is just cot theta times LH. So if I put this LH squared and put cot theta over two, like so, this half and this two here cancel. And now LH squared is just this guy here, so R squared times tan squared um, theta minus four, uh, theta, uh, 45 minus theta over four, sorry. And then of course, we've still got this cot theta over two here. So we know that the area of the triangle is this guy here. So that all in all, the area of our pentagon, A, B, C, D, E, is the area of the hexagon, which we showed was at least 2 root 3 R squared, plus this guy here. And if you do this thing plus this thing and factorize out the R squared, you're going to get this thing here. And that proves our lemma. Okay, so a lot of work, but uh, well, hopefully not too difficult work, but just a lot of computation and basic geometry to work out or a, a lower bound on the area of this pentagon. Let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken our two triangles, one which has vertices A, B, and C, and the other one which has vertices A prime, B prime, and C prime, and I've rotated and translated them to get this configuration here, and I claim that the overlap area of this guy here, or the area of intersection, is at least 28 over root 3 times uh, A squared over P squared, which is what we want. Now, how have I kind of got this uh, arrangement here? Well, we've got two triangles, and they have equal area and equal Rate, uh, sorry, equal area and equal perimeter. Now, uh, uh, kind of properties we can of each triangle is we can draw in an in circle. So that is a circle that's inside the the triangle and it touches each three sides. And then the radius of that circle is known as the in radius or the in circle radius is two a over p. So this is a result I'm not going to prove, but it's a very kind of standard one. Go ahead and look it up if you've not seen it before. But we have two circles inside each of these two triangles, both of which have radius two a over p. And we know that A and P are the same for both triangles, so that's going to be essentially the same circle but on these different triangles. Then what we're going to do is take our two triangles and uh, make them overlap uh, in the circle. So take the two triangles, we've drawn in our in-circles in both of them, and we know that those in-circles are exactly the same. So we can bring one on top of the other so that the in-circles align. Then what we're going to do is just rotate one of the triangles so we get, say, this triangle here sharing the same edge as this triangle here. So in other words, this edge here is a... This part is on both of the triangles, and we have this configuration here. So this, of course, is just like a particular case of the two triangles, but the argument I'm about to provide holds for all triangles. 
then what we're going to do is assume without loss of generality that this angle here, which I'm going to call theta, and it's going to be our theta from before, we're going to assume without loss of generality, theta is less than 60 degrees. And the reason we can do this, is we, well, we can choose any uh, of these angles here, but because angles add up in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, we can always find one which has a, a length at oh, sorry, angle at most 60 degrees, because if all of them were bigger than 60 degrees, then their sum would be bigger than 180 degrees. So this angle here, we're gonna, we're gonna assume without loss of generality is at most 60 degrees. And now what we're gonna do is notice that the area of intersection is this guy here. So all the way up here, you can't see the angle anymore, so that's theta. Okay, but notice that that there is a pentagon. Um, and we can apply our lemma from before, and we know that the area of this pentagon, so the area of the intersection, is at least, now let's see if I can remember it, 2 root 3 plus tan squared of theta, 45 minus theta over 4 times cot theta over 2, and then in big brackets, times r squared, like so. So this area here is at least this guy here, where r is now this r here, and theta is the angle of uh, a here. But now, if we just look at what's in square brackets, and I'll leave it to you to check, but notice that this guy here in square brackets is a decreasing function in theta. So as you take theta bigger and bigger, this thing in the square brackets is going to get smaller and smaller. So that means this guy here is minimized when theta is maximized. And so then that means that this guy here is always going to be bigger than or equal to the case when theta is as big as possible. But because theta is less than or equal to 60 degrees, the biggest value of theta is theta equals 60 degrees. So if we just put this in, we get 2 root 3 plus uh, tan squared, now 45 minus 60 over 4 times uh, cotangent of 30, then r squared, like so. And this is all in degrees, by the way. Uh, and now we know that r is just 2a over p, so we can just go ahead and plug that in. So we get 4a squared over p squared. Now I'll leave it to you to just plug this into your calculator. We'll just use some very standard uh, geometry angles and their cotangents and tangents and things like that. But this thing here precisely is 28 over root 3 a squared over p squared and we get the result that we won. So we've shown that the area of the intersection is at least this guy here and then maximizing theta, uh, maximizing theta minimizing this expression here. So we know that the area when theta equals 60 is going to be kind of the, the smallest possible so then that means that the area of the intersection is bigger than or equal to when theta equals 60, and then just plugging this into your calculator, you get what we want, 28 over root 3 times a squared over p squared. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this long video. Uh, most of it was kind of cool and hopefully very, very elementary to follow. And as I said at the start, there are a few different ways you can prove this result. And in fact, there are a few different bounds you can get. So in fact, you can show that this, if I get rid of 28 over root 3, you can show that uh, the area of the intersection is bigger than or equal to k times a squared over p squared, where k is a constant bigger than. 28 over root 3. So you can make this even better. But if you want to do that, I'll leave that as an exercise to you. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.